So what we're gonna do is go ahead and create a new pen together. And we're going to practice with boxes and other things that have to go with those boxes um, and how we put things inside of them and all those kinds of things. So what we're going to do is you need to go to your code pen and you need to log in. So if you haven't logged in, pause here, go do that. And we are going to create a new pen. So in this new pen, we're going to go ahead and title it real quick up at the top with your last name. Please put your last name first. It helps me so that I can help you. And then we're going to go ahead and do practice with boxes. Okay. I'm then going to take my JavaScript section and I'm going to collapse it because I don't really need the JavaScript part of it. And then we're going to go ahead and create some HTML. So what I want to talk about is the different ways that you can structure your code as you're writing it. You can write code where you write the tag, then put the stuff inside of it, or write the stuff and then put it inside a tag. It doesn't really matter what you're doing, but when it's when you're coding, you need to come up with a method so that you can remember when to do the opening tag of your container and when to do the closing tag. So I'm gonna show both ways. So we're gonna say the words, this is a heading, right? Okay. This would be where you type your content. So this is a heading. We're going to type it and we're going to make it a heading. So then after my content is exists, my text or my images or whatever, I'm then going to go to the beginning of it. I'm going to put my opening tag of an H1 and then I'm going to go to the end of it where I want the H1 to end and I'm going to close it. I suggest that as you're coding, when you open a tag, you always close it as quickly as possible. So you don't forget to close it because a lot of the times a lot of people forget the closing tag. So that's one way you can do it. We can do the exact same thing where we go H1, and then I suggest you close the H1 immediately. So you type your opening tag, and then you type your closing tag, and then you put stuff in the middle. So this is a second heading. Again, both ways work. Like I said, it's whatever works for you, but just don't forget to close your tags when you open them. And remember, the only reason we know that this is an opening tag and this is a closing tag is this beautiful little slash at the beginning of the closing tag that says, this is closing, okay? All right, so now we've created two tags and we're gonna go ahead and go below that. And on line three, we're gonna create a box. A box is actually not called a box inside of HTML. It's called a division because you're dividing the page into sections. And if you think about it, when we look at that drawing of, oh, I think I closed it, just kidding, the drawing of Behance. But if we look at the Behance website, you are dividing the page into sections, right? We are dividing this into a card, this into a card, and then this entire area, this row of cards is a section. So we are dividing our page. So instead of being called a box, it's called a division or a div. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our brackets and we're gonna open up our box of a div tag. And then I'm going to immediately close my div tag because I wanna make sure that I know when the box opens and when the box closes. And then I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Now, nothing appears on your screen, nothing, because we haven't said anything about what's in the box. We haven't said what the box is supposed to look like. We haven't done any of those things. So until, excuse me, until you tell the computer what it's supposed to look like, you're not gonna see anything pop up on your screen. So let's put something inside of it. We're gonna go ahead and go into the div tag and say text inside box. You're then gonna see that your text shows up. But again, we don't see any box features. We aren't seeing anything about the box, right? So let's make the box show up. Would we make the box show up by using HTML or by CSS? HTML has already created the structure. It's made the box exist. Now, if we wanna make it show up by giving it like a color, we would then go to CSS to do that. So I'm gonna go down to the CSS area and I'm gonna go ahead and stylize this box. How are you going to call upon the box in the CSS that's up in the HTML? You're gonna call it by name. You're gonna make that declaration. You're gonna say, hey div, I wanna start editing you. So we're gonna put a div here. You've called upon the div. You said, okay, computer, over here in my CSS, I'm styling my div tag. It's over in the HTML. Apply everything within these curly brackets to that div tag, okay? Now, let's go by starting about giving it a background color because that's gonna let us see the box, right? If we just give a color 
to our text like red, we're just gonna see the text turn red, but that doesn't show us the box, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead instead of color, I'm gonna put a background dash color on this box. And then I'm gonna go ahead and give it like a cyan color. When you do that, you'll see that the box exists. And actually the box will get bigger dependent on what's inside it. If you just left it the way it is with a background color and we go up here to our div tag and we put a break here to break to the next line and we put next line of text, you're gonna see that automatically the box will get bigger, the background color will extend and it'll keep getting bigger as you add more content to the box. What I also think is important to note is that the box goes all the way across the page. So if I go here to where my coding is and I extend the length of this or the width of this page, it will extend the width of the box automatically by default. This is called responsive design, where it is responding to how wide the page is and changing how wide it is itself. But you've made a box and you have stuff inside the box. So let's go ahead and see how we can edit this box a little bit further.